since a couple of years now, work on uh, building a World Future Council, which will be a council of um, wise elders, global pioneers and young visionaries, acting both as a global conscience, I, you know, stepping in and giving future generations a voice in the current debate, which is all very sort of short term, but also working directly with parliamentarians uh, to implement the global reform agenda, which, you know, we all know more or less what needs to be done, but we have this enormous and growing implementation deficit. And we are saying that is because leaders are not trusted anymore. And leaders who are not trusted can hardly do anything. Leaders who are trusted can do almost everything. So we're saying, you know, we need to add to the current leadership. We need to add some moral leadership. So we're looking for individuals worldwide who are already trusted. And uh, in every country there are people like that. Sometimes they are religious leaders, you know, often they are, they are writers, they may be academics, they may be people in the, in the media. We're bringing them together in an ongoing organization to speak up for not just the needs of the future generations, but for the needs of the planet, the planet as a whole, to speak for us um, as world citizens, because at the moment we're only represented in our very much narrow capacity as global consumers. And of course this council will have, will have no formal power, it'll, it'll become legitimized by the quality of its work. So it's, um, it's a challenge. Uh, I think it'll work because it has to work. It won't solve the problems of the world, but without such an organization, I don't think they can be solved anymore because there is in the, in the machinery of um, in the international institutions and you know, global governance, this is the, the missing link, the link which provides the, 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 the trust and the, the ethical integrity needed for um, what is for us to you know, walk our talk as the the Native Americans used to say, actually, to you know, stop just uh, talking about what needs to be done and move away from either this sort of very naive optimism, or you know, somehow it'll solve itself, the market will solve it, or the leaders will solve it, the politicians will solve it. Well, they won't. You know, neither the market nor the politicians, as it is now, will solve it. If you look at the state of the world today, uh, the pessimists have been right for the past 20, 30 years. You can go to Davos now, to the World Economic Forum, and what they say about climate change is what uh, Greenpeace said 10, 15 years ago. You know. And obviously, you know, if, uh, without, uh, if we can't stabilize the climate, then what's the use of all our other activities? You know, we're going to do, most people are going to drown. I mean, we're going to sort of face, we're facing unprecedented threats, both in their, in their globality and in their long-term uh, long effects. And, you know, we, are, we need institutions which, which act accordingly. So that's what we're trying to build. It's a huge challenge. We still need, we still need support. We have uh, consulted with, um, over 8,000 NGOs through um, a network called Earth Action, which is an NGO network. And we have received nominations, about 500 people have been nominated for this council. The first 20 who have widespread support will meet and they will then take over and you know, select further uh, councillors. And uh, as soon as we have the necessary funding, uh, we will launch the council hopefully next year. We have had some funding, but still not sufficient for that. Because it's not something you can do in small steps. You know, you need to really have the have the funding for the first three years or five years to be able to, to build it up. So that is my main project now. At the same time, of course, I still work with the Right Labrador Awards. We still identify these people who are projects of hope, who show that solutions are there in various areas, and we give them an award which gives them protection and recognition. The question is, often comes up today, you know, uh, who are you to do this? But that, I think, is a very misguided question because um, if the people who started to the initiative to abolish slavery, you know, 200 years ago, almost 200 years ago, if they had sat all the time and wondered about that, they would never have started. They just saw that there was there was something wrong in the world, and they thought that they had an ability to write it. Now, obviously, if they hadn't touched into a nerve, if they hadn't started something which. Uh, got a, a popular response, they would never have got anywhere and we would still have slavery. But the, the fact is that, you know, they identified something which was not just necessary, but which was possible. Now today the problem is that lots of things which are necessary are not seen as politically possible. So this uh, council will broaden the space of what is accepted as politically possible. And, um, but as, as I said, you know, people will take a look at it, they will take a look at people on it and they say, they'll think, does, does this council, you know, speak for my interests as, as a world citizen or doesn't it? And um, if it does, then people will support it.